Let's see. So, so I'm not. So I'm mainly interested in. So I'm mainly interested in uh, uh, collecting requirements. Actually, uh, sort of understanding what the what the requirements are, what we should do next. Uh, so I, I gave this slide uh, earlier in my talk this morning. Um, oh man, this is so hard to drive. Oh, yeah. Oops. Uh, Um, but uh, so, it's, it's, so, so you know, I think my interest will just you know, review it, right? Is to um, provide funding and, and uh, 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 guidance for some of the for some of the infrastructure parts of uh, 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 Semantic Media Wiki, you know, which could be improved in order to expand its reach, expand its usefulness to you all. You know, try and do things that are of common common use. With particular interest in uh, uh, the commercial sector and the government sector, because I think if we get that right, then we get the, uh, uh, the sort of more personal wikis or academic wikis. You know, you, you end up with a with a system that's effective for them as well. So uh, these are again just the the things I had in my slide earlier. Um, I will. Uh, uh, so I'll go through them one real, real quick and then ask if anybody has any comments. Um, so first, we, we, we got a lot of feedback that uh, about the multi-data source environment. You know, we shouldn't pull all the data into the middle of the wikis. And so we've, we've been working a little bit on that. Obviously, a lot of other people, the Aqueduct work, also good work on that. And uh, so, uh, uh, and others. Um, so that, that seems like a clear thing. Uh, you expand the idea of the data sources a little bit. So we, I'll tell you a story. We did a, we did plugins for Microsoft Office, right? PowerPoint, uh, Outlook, Word, Excel, which um, uh, uh, would uh, uh, allow you to access the wiki data from Office, right? Uh, bring the data back in, do some quick edits from Office. So try and stay within your Office environment. It worked for Office 2007. Um, it was kind of a pain in the butt to configure, but but was, it worked off of a, a standard feature in Microsoft Office, Microsoft Office called Smart Tags. We thought, how could this lose? And everybody's got you know the, the, the known universe runs on Office. You know, surely everybody who has a wiki is going to have some. And you know, it was remarkably unsuccessful. Right? I mean, it was good code, good work, but but didn't ever get any adoption. So, you know, why? Right? And I look at that and I wonder, you know, should we be funding an Office 2010 version of this or not? Right? Um, so, I, I, you know, I, I think about corporations, I think my intuitions just were completely wrong on this, and I'm not sure what was going on. Uh, usability. I worry about uh, user level authoring, not of instance level information, but of the data schema information. Uh, it's uh, really easy to screw this up. You know, DBAs are going to have a job for a reason. And so, uh, you know, is it useful? Are there, is this a requirement? This was a strong requirement when we started this project yay, these many years ago. Uh, I don't know that it's a requirement anymore. I'd love some feedback on that. Uh, a lot of what we do is, is, spend, is make visualizations. Ning over there in the corner, Jesse, make Great visualizations, right? Graphs and charts and flashing stuff. It's really cool. What is the next one that's necessary? Right? 3D flying bats? I don't know. Yeah? I mean, is that the next necessary one? Right? So, and there's always this problem whenever you're in the corporate or government environment about data management. Um, have we solved the deployability problem or not? Is current level of security sufficient or not? And you know, I, I always wonder about competition. I guess I've, I've said that. So uh, maybe enough said. Um, does anybody have any opinions on any of these? Sir, strong. Um, we have tunnel vision in the wiki. You can see your page. You can see what links here, but you can't really get a sense of anything one hop further away. I've built a couple things that scrape the wiki, extract all the objects, make links out of the relationships and then throw that into one of these uh, spring and weight graphs and let it lay itself out. 
even that's unmanageable. If that was instead being laid on a hyperbolic sphere so it goes over the horizon. You've got a great big wiki. Of course. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I, actually, SIPPDI has done a little bit of this, but I've done so many small internal ones also. Oh, I see. Okay. A couple hundred pages. All right. It, it just, I need, I need a way to see everything, but I accept that there's too much to see it all at one time. I need something that gets me one or two hops out in the network and doesn't have to go further, but I can interact and keep going. It's I need that. It's like so a graph? We made, we made a graph. Right? Yeah. I heard both, but neither. Oh, Is it like a graph? Yes, but interactive where I can keep walking through and, and, mm -hmm. and click and, and navigate. Is it more like a, a drill down sort of things? Or, uh... I still think in my head I'm seeing a hyperbolic graph surface where it's just laying over the horizon. There is a, um, I, 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 I recently discovered a, uh, a uh, JavaScript library that includes both force directed and hyperbolic graph layouts. So I think it might be interesting, interesting for us to look at putting into maybe where he gives a sort of SRF So, so that's well, interesting. interesting. Is, is anybody else having trouble yes. with their users navigating their wikis or well, understanding the layout of them? Well, yeah. one, of the, one, of the, one of the things that I've run into, particularly with you know, the SRF output in the graph, which is we're kind of talking about that, is you know, I, I have a query that says, okay, uh, you know, for everything that's linked to me, should we get all of the links to this particular property? And, and unfortunately, some of those some of those things have a such a high cardinality. It's like you know a thousand links when you go out two hops. Right. So. Um, Very difficult to compress. Yeah. Right, and, and the other thing is that you, even if you try to do a uh, you know, a count. It actually doesn't give you the right value because it's just counting the number of second, you know, one top out nodes, not the number of links from those nodes. So, so you can't actually even get the uh, the an accurate count to say if it, you know, you know, if it's below this, if it's only uh, only the graph below this number. Okay, that's good. Um, so can, can I, I'd like to ask Mike, what what kind, of, how do your mods look like? Because if you have a graph, essentially you have one type of node and one type of arc. So I sometimes do color based on properties. You know, people get a certain shape and uh, plants. Yeah, different different categories of the wiki get a different presentation. Okay. Um, because the wiki have, can have many uh, properties, and if you want to do it on a, on a pane or on a hyperbolic graph, you have to probably to select I'm interested in this and this. So there's a lot of configuration necessary in order to make this model um, useful. And the, the same thing is also true if you look at ontology editors, for example. It's exactly yes. the same thing. Although if you have a desktop application, you can have arbitrary um, visualizations there, but um, either your model is too small that you don't actually need a visualization, or your model is too big that even the visualizations could not. So I think the big is the reason I keep thinking hyperbolic, because when I build these things, they turn into hairballs. Mm -hmm. They're unusable. It's easy to construct it, but it's hard to interpret it. But what, what I want to say is, this is not a wiki specific issue. This is very general whenever you deal with RDS data. You have graphs, the conceptual model is clear, but for us to see it, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I think I, I, I got that. Yeah. Let, let's not try and design the solution. Yeah. So let, me, let me try and just hit, hit the requirements. So I understand, you know, abstracting, understanding the navigation system, and then maybe hyperbolic graphs, maybe, you know, giant tree structures or, or something maps. like what links here, but just a little more visual, even, would be nice. What else? I want people to say something about the Microsoft Office thing. Uh -huh. Don't abandon that effort. Maybe just think of an approach whereby. Uh, there won't be a, a standard UI, I think, that will fit the needs of everybody. But maybe have that, maybe I don't know, the page object model, have somehow make it accessible from VBA or something so people can craft solutions. So, I don't know. And then there's a, like a reference implementation where you can do the generic stuff. Well, we have to rewrite it anyway because the, the 2007 code won't work in 2010 for Microsoft reasons. Yeah, yeah. But, Jesse, you want to take? We can talk more about that in the next one. Oh, you can, we already have a talk on this. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, uh, but it's right, you know. Uh, I think we really want to talk about it, and we would like to talk about the requirements, and what people would use, uh, would want out of this type of product or, or service or whatever, right? 
uh, you know, I, I'm work, I used to work at Microsoft, I now work in a medium-sized company, 500 person company called Mocha. They're all sort of big companies in my opinion, not like you know, 20 person startups or really smaller, mm -hmm. small business. But, so I, I sort of think, you know, people use Office, probably don't use Wiki all the time. <laughs> and huh. people who really use Wiki, they don't like really to change have a big enterprise you know, uh, environment that sometimes, you know, I, I think, so I, I sort well, of think maybe there's... A good use case I, that comes to mind is yeah. trying to do editing on a wiki for table-oriented data might be easier to do in Excel, and then there might be a quick way of pumping into Excel, do your thing, and then pop back. I don't know. Maybe not necessarily annotation and all the things, duplicating everything. From a, this, a usability and convenience perspective, I don't know. And, and another thing I think for SMW is, it's great cool technology, or even like Apple. I believe most people here do agree. But it's not a solution for yet. So I think if you really provide this, to sell this to a uh, company, right? If they want a solution. They probably don't really need, hey, this is great technology. You show the technology, you say, what should we do with this technology, right? They probably won't really develop something on the end now, or just consume in the way like you want them to. Uh, so I think what we need to do maybe you know, next time is to uh, really sell them a like, solution end-to-end -end solution to, to get things done or to plug into their existing workflows. And, but um, then maybe, you know, I, I just, uh, I'm asking you guys, you know, if you're in a big enterprise, or you know, medium size or, or government, would you be interested in buying or, or, or using such a solution you know, that uh, sort of builds, tested, and it can be plugged into your system or something like that? I, I think in my mind, the biggest use case for an office plug-in kind of thing is that, in my experience, the, for the, the, the wiki user, the higher up in the organization they are, the more likely they are to author all their content in Word and then just post an attachment on the wiki. <laughs> and I absolutely hate that. It yeah. drives me bananas. And if you could let them write it in Word, but have it show up as a wiki page, yes. you know, that would be so nice. I mean, open Office does it. There's an Open Office translate. We do have that. We did have that. Uh, it's email, actually. In, if you write the email message, uh, you can send that either out manually or automatically. Up to be uploaded into your wiki. One of my wish list items that, that, that's a far off uh, that I thought about uh, for anything where, uh, I can say, hey, Wiki or Acrobat, where the page has properties, you know, data associated with that page. I think I, I, this is highly speculative, but uh, I'm often asked to give impromptu PowerPoint presentations mm -hmm. with things like pod charts. Okay? <laughs> we talk about I think you know the world. Yeah. Uh, at the last minute. Yeah. So if I have data on a wiki, I have I have information on a wiki article, I have analytics, I have data and stuff like that. You know, Slidey is a fantastic uh, package that Tim Burns leads because you know, he wants to do things in a browser and he uses a dog food. Because he's but, basically a god. Yes. But boy, <laughs> you know, if if an article were to be rendered as a a PowerPoint slide or a uh, as a slidey slide. But, you know, there's a mode, a new, you know, printable version, quad chart version. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this, this is this is a powerful thing for man and a message. Uh, uh, you know, and you could put together decks on the fly. Hey, what's the latest report of this? Well, I got an article, boom, produce it. So, hey, hey, hey. All right, there is an extension that does that. Yeah, there is, and I've seen that one, but it's really, yeah. last time I looked at it, it was dated. And, and the problem is that the only thing that it does is it allows you to build the outline. You know, here's my bullet indentation, but people like the pretty pictures. They want the background or the embedded graphic, and you can't do that with that outline. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 I think, I, okay. So yeah. vector graphics. Yeah. My rule for things, if you want something in an extension, it probably is already built, but then you go look at it, it's like it's three years old, and it's not maintained, yeah. or 
Okay, well, Ted, let me, uh, since I've forgotten that Jesse has a whole talk on this, so let, let's, let's uh, drop the Microsoft Office mm -hmm. stuff and, and tell his talk. And, and uh, by the way, I should say, it's a little hard. We are going to, you know, we are going to do something for Office 2010. Right? It's just, I think we probably need a little better sense of what the requirements would be, since I think we missed it the first time around. Let me simplify Office to just WYSIWYG, which I think is the core of that. And I'm used to doing work with Blogger, where somebody has to deal with the presentation layer, but also edit the, the content. In that case, there's a show preview, but it's an ajax bit where you switch between them. It still feels a little heavyweight that I have to preview, save, commit to sort of go from looking at the, the preview form to the editing form. And just unifying that would be a big win. Um, let me just throw this out because there's a lot on my mind. Is anybody unhappy with our current level of security right now? With the Halo ACL, let's just say, which is I think probably the largest point. Do we need to do anything more? Is this going to hit all the government requirements that are hittable given that it's a media wiki, given that it's media wiki base? So. Well, I, you know, my, my only thought on that is that it's, it's kind of hard to prove to anybody, or at least as far as I know, it's it's difficult to say, yes, this is compliant with some, you know what I mean? And, and odds are it's not because of you. Yeah, <laughs> and so that's kind of the problem, you know. Right now, you know, we're we're, we're saying, oh yeah, uh, we've got this thing that protects the pages, and they look and they go, yeah, it does, but someday somebody might do something, and then it'll all come crashing down. I just don't know. And, and so it's not really your problem, but it's it's just sort of a, um, you know, it's just kind of a question. It's like, are you, are you asking for a kind of official certificate? No, I mean, I, I'm really happy with it because it, you know, you guys put it out there and you're like, okay, people break in. And, you know, I remember trying to make templates and doing funny things. And, and, and so it seems really good. I just, I, I, can, I just, you know, it's, I'm always looking for whatever the next problem is and who's going to complain. And I, that's just kind of keep, doesn't keep me awake at night, but it pops in my head sometimes and I'm like, hmm, wonder what will happen. And besides that, it's, um, there, it's really, 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 really configurable. Mm. And you could get lost in it or miss something really easily. Like, like, like for instance, we, we, we deployed this site and um, uh, what was it was missing? Oh. Uh, you know, because now it's like it's it's kind of a new thing, but you can say you know like the the users group or whatever, and then you have all these permissions that you can control with the global thing on the left, the tab. Well, it was missing in the configuration file. It was missing like a new thing for editing semantic forms, mm -hmm. and it wasn't up there by default. And I didn't bother looking for it in the sites live. And the guy goes to the site, the the PI, and he's like, "Oh my God, we can't edit the forms. This is you know," and I'm like. Wow, why is that? And then I'm like digging through and I'm looking at everything. I finally pull up the configure it, the INI file. And I'm like, oh shit, that's missing. Okay, I went up there and put it in, and then everybody was happy again. So um, it's a little easy to get lost in the configuration. I remember that somebody was saying yesterday that um, would be confusing sometimes the user interface and the just the heap of configurations which are at hand for the. Use Maybe we should make another pass on it. Well, I mean, you made it a lot easier than the first version. The first version, because the second, or I don't know what version it, I'm talking about, but the latest one that I've seen, you've got the kind of global options. It's that far left-hand tab. Um, early versions had some weird things where you might save a page, but it, or you might set a property in, in the in the Ajax -E interface, but then the page wasn't set right, or something weird would happen, and it would get all out of sync, and it'd be like. Okay, so let's throw this away and rebuild it, and and you know, because figuring it out was really hard. But I haven't noticed that lately. But I'm still a little gun shy of the Ajaxy GUI thing, and tend to prefer to just go and edit the pages in the namespace. But that's just me. Um, I can't say that I've seen any problems with it lately, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you're on then. Yeah, I mean, it, as far as access control goes, it's it's just a it's a hard problem and a, 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 almost an impossible problem as far as MediaWiki is concerned. Yeah. Um, uh, because, well, 
there's, there's the issue of extensions. I mean, extensions have to follow the rules in order for them to, be, to work with access control. Uh, I know the semantic drill down extension doesn't, uh, doesn't work with it. And I guess there's a similar, the faceted search one within SMW Plus doesn't work with it yet. Yeah, we have specific uh, subsets of extensions which we've tested. But yeah, that's, that's uh, right. what you have to do. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it becomes an issue of, uh, it, it, it works with this set of extensions with these versions and with yep. MediaWiki mm -hmm. with this version and with these yep. patches applied, mm -hmm. um, which is cool when it works, but uh, you, if people are really paranoid about it, I, I just don't think it'll ever, well, you know, never say never, but uh, unless MediaWiki, unless core MediaWiki, in my opinion, unless core MediaWiki really, uh, you know, uh, take security to heart and, and put them, you know, build it right into the system. I, I, I don't think Mark? I, you can guarantee that kind of thing. One thing, if you really need to go further um, in going some of the government environments, is you to think about down. maybe tapping on at the secure database level. Because then you'd actually get a sense of the accreditation from the secure databases. That's interesting. That's a significant yeah. Can you repeat what you say? I think yeah. that's you what you... Wanted, you so say a little louder. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. So there are a number of databases from the major vendors, you know, Oracle and so forth, that basically are accredited for high, higher levels of government security and actually tapping into things at the database level and using those mechanisms, you know, may be the way to get beyond the media wiki uh, issues. So you have some of them. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the I, you know, some of us were talking about earlier. Essentially, the security folks typically distinguish between mandatory controls and discretionary controls, where discretionary controls are at the application or user level, and the mandatory are at the system level. Right. And the database stuff is a way of getting in at the mandatory level. And it's per 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 element, right? In these yeah. databases, yeah. right? Per row, yeah. per column. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's something my SQL doesn't. And maybe something I don't know about the traceability aspect, so looking what who did what and yeah. how it all did what then. Yeah. So so one encouraging thing um, in, in the subject of security is uh, we saw from Clarence and Desiree's um, presentation earlier, apparently SMW has been credited on the super on super which that's that's probably the biggest hurdle. I mean, it's sort of orthogonal to is the security really right or good? <laughs> it's the biggest hurdle. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's Intelpedia? Intelpedia is it's not semantic. It's it's he, he was at the last conference. Wasn't someone from Intelpedia? Oh, it's not completely semantic. No, it's, it's a media it's not, it's not, it's not semantic. semantic. It's not semantic. In fact, it's at, an I old thought there was someone from Intelpedia last year. Oh, at a previous SMW time? Yeah. Maybe Someone that was, yeah. It might have been a wish. Maybe. It's been a long time wish of mine to throw it in there. But, yeah. Uh, someone mentioned. It, I know that they've been. I know that they've looked at Semantic Media Wiki. The problem it, there's a business problem with Intellipedia. Um, the group that does that doesn't really do the wiki stuff. They basically they get a pile of funding to make some change to Intellipedia. They get the money, they contract out the action, and then when that money's over, the support is over. And so they don't add extensions that they can't continue to support with their core group of people. So, and because their core group of people won't learn semantic media with you, because it's just more work for them, they won't do it, they won't use it. Um. Got a little bit of time. Let me let me move on. What about uh, well, what about this last one? Because I think the most interesting. One. Where where is SMW the weakest right now? I mean, what is it? The, what is the one thing, two things, three things that we got to do? Not an SMW plus necessarily, but where is the core? Mike. So my answer to this would be <coughs> marketing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we got SEO. Yeah, no, but, but what, I, what I mean, when you look at newspapers or yeah. there, we, we had it earlier that there is a Drupal book, for example. Yeah. That there is there are a couple of pages which sell Drupal extensions and stuff. And in the uh, journals, I, I don't know, the public computer, computer journal for everybody, I'm pretty sure 
Media Wiki, SMW is hardly mentioned at all. Drupa and all the other things are mentioned like every second issue. That means that the community is like very small, very, very strong. Yeah, that's a good point. I think Drupal Club has solid enough people, I think. Right? I don't know. Never been there. Never been there. I heard about that. Okay, that's point well, point, point worth taking. Um, what else? I mean, I agree, but, but what else? I mean, well, to tie in with that is that there's, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I guess a subset of that is that there's just no, uh, there's no, like, bucket for people to think about semantic media wiki. I think that, you know, when you, when you say Drupal, you, you say, oh, that's a place where you can, you know, put your website or, or whatever else. But the, people, there's just no concept of, of a semantic wiki in general. There's, just no, there's nothing where you can say it's, 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 a, it's another example of this that... Oh, you're right. Oh, but maybe my, my earlier statement even holds for media wiki. Yes. Oh, okay. But how much work is involved in getting a Samba mount so files that are uploaded could be mounted directly to your Windows machine for read-write access? I'm not going to answer that. Worth considering if even plausible. Is right now that you upload yeah. a file and it just kind of goes there and it's separate, yeah. we do all kinds of stuff to mount file systems, web addresses, but why couldn't there be the J drive is the wiki? Which yeah. Where would you, can you explain? Can you Right now, somebody uploads a file into the wiki, goes into the file space, and it's there, and it's revision controlled. We use, at my organization, one other open source sort of CMS-y thing, and it exposes a Samba mount. And as a result, people mount it to their network computer, and when they're working in Microsoft Word, they can say, save to the J drive. And that's going in and out of this revision controlled oh. file repository. And every save triggers triggers a new revision. But think about it this way. If if somebody goes to the trouble of uploading a thousand files onto a wiki and then it's your job to go get them, it would take you freaking forever. But if you could just mount it as a file system and copy them, oh. it would be easy. Why don't you just put it on a web page? WebDev or any of these, I think, is the solution. I said Samba, but anything of that space. I mean, I would put it in a wiki. Yeah. Well, but we, we, we get the revision control. It's already there. Right now, documents either live in the wiki or live in the file system. Why not unify it? Yeah. Yeah. We, we already have a WebDev interface and the Halo extension. So the, the problem is solved, but marketing was apparently missing. So. Um, you can you can mount Back your. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's got his head. In his I'm not the marketing guy. <laughs> All right, okay, it's a little plain then. So, well, so but that, that seems to be a killer feature for corporate so environments. You mount your wiki into your um, uh, file explorer, and um, there you can explore uh, each article. You have it as, as a folder, That's cool. and you can simply drop files into each individual folder, which is representing an, an article. I believe like you can do a more. bit more yeah. <laughs> also, um, but that's basically there. And it's ready for review and feedback. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's my user group meeting is for. Yeah. Um, so Mark, so, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm yeah. Well, OK, I was just going to reiterate something that I heard somebody say in the presentation, or maybe it was you, I think. But uh, the, what, the distance from, from installing SMW to payoff is very large. Uh, yeah. The, you know, the, from, from the point where you've, you're, you're, you're installing it, and then you have to train some people, and you probably need to write some forms, mm -hmm and you have to get some content in there all the way until you can make your first query that says, yes, we've got payoff. Yeah. That's a yeah. long time. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what to do mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. See content. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of like you know, the distance of install between installing a database and 
Yeah. Coming so up big. with a business report, it's also pretty long. Yeah. Maybe in this case, the payoff is so high, you just take the pay. Well, I, think that's, I think that's also just a limit of wiki itself. I mean, it's not really useful without a ton of content. Yeah. 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 The yeah. is different. This is yeah. how this are there. This is already there. Um, you have uh, made that observ observation too, and we have discussed about that internally. Um, our ideal model is um, Microsoft Excel. If you start it, you can, if you click on it to launch it, Microsoft Excel, then your cursor blinks in a field and it's ready for usage and you can immediately use it. But um, SMW it's different. And if you have installed it, then you must think about, all right, I need to do my categories, a property, and then a query, and then I fill in some instances. And this takes time. So uh, it, it requires a simple <coughs> for SMW to have a immediate uh, uh, payoff of the work. That also gets with our documentation and training. <laughs> Or tutorials, <laughs> to have yep. better tutorials and documentation. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Screencasts with all the extensions. Yeah, we're 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 for a uh, how-to setting for Yeah. For <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's uh, it's good feedback. <laughs> I mean, uh, but I think, I think we're 100 percent better than, they, than we were yeah. last year. But if we're not at the level we need to be, that's something I need to know because that's actually something I spend a lot of money on. So uh, Daniel gets to hear me yell at him all the time. On. And so, uh, no, it's good to know. Thorough hello world that goes from nothing yeah. to everything. <laughs> yeah, like a tutorial. Like I mean, uh, even that car we from Stanford, I showed like we should document everything that took place step to step to get that because there's enough charting and visualizations and articles, even with those 40 people adding two pages yeah. to show the payoff. But you know, that's actually took a huge step <laughs> to get there. I was able to do it today because I put, you know, 50 wakes up, but I don't think anybody else will. It's good to know. All right, well, we're getting close. I think there's some cookies outside, but, but so is there somebody, a couple of last, last comments, and then I promise I'm writing these down. Well, this might not be for you. More for the, I had a interesting question for the government people. <laughs> have you guys thought too much about classification and have solutions on how to do classifications for market? Properties. I mean, I heard someone say that NA area is working better, which is what we tried to do at one time. I mean, as far as classifying each property, every single property, you know, oh. people have, have wanted to discuss possibilities and classification. Because we've come up with a lot of use cases where, when it comes to semantics, I mean, my ontologist talk, he has quite think he's out there talking about it. Because, and so I don't know if other people have come up with We've written a system that does that, that is not a wiki or a semantic. I mean, it uses RDF. But it's not a wiki at all. Um, it turned out to be. And what we have done is, I think, is pretty good too. We do we'll ran a roll ups and stuff, basically, wikis and stuff. We some pretty good stuff too. I just don't know what other people have thought about that type of thing. I wanted to discuss that somewhere, because that would be something that I think is real powerful for the, the thoughts. I mean, classifying semantic markup. Yeah. And also, I mean, the one that he always talks about is that two things are unclassified, but the fact that you know these two things together is a classified thing. He's, that's who well, that's, that's the hard one. Yeah. Right, and that's what he's constantly figuring out how to yeah. handle that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are we talking so Yeah, someone, I mean, that was the only thing. Yeah. I asked if I could even ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Someone that's relatively new to SMW, I think the biggest thing you can do to drive adoption is uh, get it as part of the media with you. <laughs> right. hey, yeah. That is the biggest thing you can do. Uh, every, I mean, that ties back to what you were saying. You can make it a feature inside the media wiki, then people start using it using it if it really is useful for the kind of application that they want. I mean, into well, their code base. Right. Yeah. 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 It checked yeah. in. It's not a separate thing you have to demo. It's separate. Uh, well, that they have to develop some kind of justification to go get that and then ramp up on the next learning curve. So yeah, yeah. It seems like, you know, kind of obvious, but I think that. Don't they do all that by committee? Don't they have to vote about what goes in? Can you speak up? I have. Don't they have to vote about what goes into the wiki code base? Or 
Does anyone know? I'm sure it's a hard thing. <laughs> well, Not invented here. Well, there's, there's never there's never voting per se. You have, to, you have to get the right people to agree. It's it's not going to happen. Yes. No, this is why working on the SMW micro. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance he wants to get it onto Wikipedia, but it's, it's never going to get into the core immediately. It'll still it'll still be a good stage. I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, I wish I knew the way to that. Right. I think it's uh, and and in fact, uh, you know, what has been made clear to me is that Semantic Media Wiki is only the latest in a long line of things that people want to get into Media Wiki, and they have a, a certain practiced skepticism sure. about this. I think all big open source projects have that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, absolutely, absolutely. Mike. Uh, so several people have talked about the desire to track pages from another wiki, particularly Wikipedia and Edge, or in annotations to that. So having some better mechanisms for doing that, and particularly actually tracking updates um, mm -hmm. as they're current, would be would be helpful. I'm not sure how to do it. But, uh, ah, so so I, we've actually built a prototype in Vulkan uh, that, that hooks into live feed Wikipedia and takes semantic annotations and remerges them to the extent it can back into the non-semantic article. Um, I'll show it to you. Cool. But it's, cool. it's, it's, so in fact it's out there on the extension library. It's called the Ultrapedia extension. And uh, uh, you will need some help. It, it's, it's one of our least downloaded extensions because nobody knows what the hell it does. But it's, uh, but it's out there. And uh, you and I can collaborate and tell you about how to do it. Um, it. It was built for a very specific use case. And so it's not general. Cookies are getting stale. Final thoughts, anybody? All right, let's go. We have a 20 minutes break. Thank you, by the way. Thank you. Thank you.